this the most pain-free offer on TV? You can get a second one. Just pay a separate fee. Call or log on to buybeactiveplus.com. Order now. Look, how's the designers that get your heart racing? And inside the prices, new, every day. Hurry and grab them. They'll be gone in a flash. Designer sales up to 70% off. Shopguild.com today. Say, what are you doing? Just playing solitaire. Oh, Jay, it's not the 90s anymore. Solitaire Grand Harvest? It has everything you love about the nostalgic solitaire. Wow. And so much more. Exciting challenges, rewarding harvest feeling, and even build your own farm. Join us and explore a new world of solitaire. Download Solitaire Grand Harvest for free now. Okay, so I just discovered the ultimate shortcut. No, it's not my lit mini cheesecakes. Which take half the time and are twice as good. It's these hot little buttons on my dish remote. They let you create shortcuts so you can use them instantly, like launch on demand. Just press and hold the diamond button to customize your dish remote for on demand, closed captioning, access to streaming apps, and more. Let's see if you can make tonight's meal. Worth a try. Watch Girl Meets Farm Sunday mornings at 11 on Food Network. That does it for us tonight. We will see you again tomorrow. Now it is time for the last word. Allie Belshi is in for Lawrence tonight. Good evening, Allie. Good evening, Alex. Uh, thank you, and good to see you. You have a great evening, and we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, well. Well, can an October surprise change the outcome of the midterms this year? We're 33 days away from finding an answer to that question. The first major October surprise of the election season arrived on Monday, when the Daily Beast reported that Georgia's Republican Senate and anti-choice candidate Herschel Walker paid for his then-girlfriend's abortion in 2009. The Daily Beast is now reporting that that woman is also the mother of one of Herschel Walker's four children. We're going to have more reporting on that later in the show. Republicans, however, continue to support Herschel Walker's candidacy, and recent polling shows that he's in a tight race with the Democratic incumbent, Senator Raphael Warnock. But there's one October surprise that could change the course of the midterm elections, and it's coming from over 7,000 miles away in Saudi Arabia. OPEC Plus, the alliance of oil-producing nations led by Saudi Arabia and Russia, announced a 2 million barrel per day cut in oil production yesterday. OPEC Plus's decision could lead to a potential spike in gas prices just 33 days before the midterms. Today, President Joe Biden had a one-word reaction to OPEC Plus's decision. Disappointment. What's your reaction to the OPEC Plus? Disappointment, and uh, we're looking at what alternatives we may have. Now, OPEC Plus's decision comes after the Biden administration spent more than a week urging oil-producing countries to increase their oil output. Ali Shihabi, a Saudi analyst, told the New York Times, quote, it is certainly not a hostile anti-Biden act. It has nothing to do with Biden. It's to keep the price in an acceptable band, end quote. Okay. So how should we analyze this set of facts? This summer, Saudi Arabia paid former President Donald Trump to host a tournament at his golf courses, which is a move that was much criticized as so-called sports washing, attempting to launder its reputation on human rights abuses with people who don't care about that sort of thing. People like the former president, who bragged to reporter Bob Woodward that he, quote, saved Mohammed bin Salman after a Saudi death squad had Washington Post reporter Jamal Khashoggi killed and dismembered with a bone saw. Donald Trump's words, as quoted in Woodward's book called Rage, quote, I saved his ass. I was able to get Congress to leave him alone. I was able to get them to stop, end quote. Those were Trump's actual words about helping a dictator avoid scrutiny for dismemberment of a journalist for an American newspaper who was mildly critical of his regime. I saved his ass. It's a far cry from rail politic acceptance that sometimes a president has to act in an unsavory way to serve a superseding interest for the United States. Donald Trump's top advisor, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, was famously text buddies with MBS. He openly admits to advising him on how to weather the Khashoggi death and the dismemberment matter. Six months after leaving the White House, Jared Kushner received a $2 billion investment from a fund that was led by Mohammed bin Salman. The reason for that confidence in Jared Kushner's business acumen remains woefully unclear. 
There were lesser moments as well. We'll remind you that Donald Trump's first official foreign visit in 2017, after he became president, was to Saudi Arabia, which is a remarkable break from presidential tradition. And during the first two years of Donald Trump's presidency, the Saudi government spent $270,000 by booking 500 rooms for their lobbyists in Donald Trump's D.C. hotel. Those payments came just before Donald Trump finalized a $110 billion weapons deal with Saudi Arabia. Born and bred New Yorker Donald Trump, who told many tall tales about 9-11 over the years, called into a television station on September 11, 2001, bragging that the destruction of the Twin Towers might have had the upside of making a building that he owned the tallest in New York. This summer, when asked about the families of 9-11 victims who were protesting the Saudi-backed golf tournament at his club in New Jersey, Donald Trump said, quote, Nobody's gotten to the bottom of 9-11, unfortunately. Nobody's gotten to the bottom of 9-11? Really? Fifteen of the nine, 19 hijackers were Saudi citizens. Osama bin Laden was born in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia denies official involvement in the attack that killed nearly 3,000 people. Denied. Vladimir Putin, by the way, also denies that he started the war in Ukraine and that Ukrainians want to live in Ukraine and not in Russia. A rise in oil prices could translate into more funding for Vladimir Putin's war on Ukraine. It's a war which Joe Biden very outspokenly wants the other side, Ukraine, to win. OPEC Plus, and Saudi Arabia in particular, have not condemned Putin's war. Russia has never condemned Saudi Arabia's invasion of Yemen. These are just facts. I'm going to close with one more fact. Gas prices move the needle in American elections, and democracy is on the ballot in 33 days in America. 33 days. If democracy loses in America, what chance does it have in Ukraine or the Middle East? Who wants democracy to win? Who wants it to lose? Joining me now, Peter Beinart, professor of journalism and political science at the City University of New York. He's an MSNBC political analyst. And Nicholas Kristof, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and author, soon to resume his column at the New York Times. Gentlemen, thank you for uh, being with us this evening. Peter, let me just start with you because we don't know why Mohammed bin Salman or Vladimir Putin or any of these guys got involved in it. I will say as an economic journalist, the price of oil was not in a place that demanded a two billion, a two million barrel a day cut. It was in the 80s. Uh, so we can only take the facts that we've got and, and try to make sense of them. How do you calculate these, these odds? There may have been more than one motivation. Motivation. It may have been that they were genuinely afraid that a recession would push the price of oil down. But as you laid out, it's certainly the case that the Saudis would rather have the Trump-era Republican Party and indeed the Trump family in power than divide the administration and Democrats. Why is that? Because the Trump administration is easier to buy. The Trump administration and the Saudis have already started to do that. They've made huge investments in Trump's own wallet, in Jared Kushner's wallet. They've also invested big money in Steve Mnuchin's investment fund, the former Treasury Secretary. And they have clear evidence from Trump's first term that virtually nothing they could do would lead him to decide that the United States should put pressure on Saudi Arabia. So why would they not essentially want Republicans to do better in these midterm elections. Nicholas, um, OPEC's a cartel. It's been around since 1960. It's got 13 members. OPEC Plus is another 10 members. The, the, the biggest, the most influential uh, country in OPEC is Saudi Arabia. The most influential country in OPEC Plus is Russia. These are two groups who, to Peter's point, don't like uh, Joe Biden very much uh, and know that while inflation's happening all over the, the world, people do associate it with gas prices. Yeah, and you know, frankly, I wish that we had learned lessons from dealing with Putin and understanding the danger of bolstering a leader uh, and thinking somehow we can manage him. And if we applied that lesson you to Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, because, you know, look, this is President Biden expressing disappointment, but when somebody has stabbed you in the back, stabbed your country in the back, uh, has embraced Russia, and made it more difficult to sanction Russia and reduce its oil revenues. You know, that's not just a reason for disappointment. I think that's got to be a reason for a, a real tough response. And, you know, of course, this isn't one action on one day. This is a pattern for MBS for years now. You mentioned his invasion of Yemen, uh, the world's worst humanitarian crisis. He also kidnapped Lebanon's prime minister.
minister. He created a rift with Qatar, which was badly damaging to America's interests. You know, and he has savaged dissidents at home, including women's rights activists. Peter, what? There's been a new development in this, and that is uh, for, for two nations that are not big fans of Joe Biden's right now for different reasons. Uh, Joe Biden made comments tonight at a fundraiser uh, talking about uh, nuclear, the threat of nuclear uh, response from Russia. He, he, I just want to read you a little bit of what he said. He says, uh, this is the first time since the Cuban Missile Crisis that we have a direct threat of the use of a nuclear weapon if, in fact, things continue down the path they are going. I'm trying to figure out what is Putin's off-ramp? Where does he find a way out? Where does he find himself in a position that he does not only lose fa uh, not lose face, but lose significant power within Russia? Uh, we have not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuba mi Cuban Missile Crisis. He's not joking when he talks about the potential use of tactical nuclear weapons or biological or chemical weapons because his military is significantly underperforming. I don't think there's any such thing as the ability to use a tactical nuclear weapon and not end up in Armageddon. I didn't realize how much, this is the interesting part, I didn't realize how much serious damage the previous administration did to our foreign policy. That's the, that's the clearest response so far that we've had uh, from President Biden on the saber rattling uh, from Vladimir Putin. What do you make of, of this, of Putin talking about nuclear weapons and the use of them? I think we are the closest we have come to the prospect of nuclear war since the early 1980s, since, since, since a particular moment during the Reagan administration when there was a nuclear exercise called Able Archer that the Russians thought was actually the real thing and went essentially to death on one. It's been a long time. Now, the, danger, the problem is that we really don't know uh, what Vladimir Putin's kind of thinking patterns are, and he's shown will, a willingness to do really irrational almost catastrophically irrational things, and it's not clear how good our sources of ability to kind of talk to him are. Um, and that's what's so frightening. It's also not easy to see, as Joe Biden said, what the off-ramp is. I mean, assuming Vladimir Putin is not deposed, um, uh, there's not going to be a peace agreement anytime soon, nor, frankly, should there be. And the more success the Ukrainians have on the battlefield, the more desperate and dangerous Putin becomes. It's a very frightening situation. But Nick, I want to get your take on this. I mean, there, there are a few options. There are, I mean, I hate to say this, but there are small nuclear weapons that, that in the arsenal of 1,200 weapons that Russia has, uh, they could target uh, a sparsely populated part of Ukraine or one of these places where there are a concentration of Ukrainian soldiers. They could target another place in Ukraine that, that isn't in the Russian controlled territories. Uh, what do you think could happen here? Because the, the one danger of having a nuclear weapon as a deterrent is once you use it, the deterrent effect is gone. That's true. And look, um, I think the general view among Russia experts and nuclear experts is that it is unlikely that Russia will use a tactical nuke or any other weapon, but possible. And, you know, odds are, you know, who knows, what is that, 20%, uh, 10%, uh, nobody knows. And, you know, that might be uh, dropping it uh, offshore, it might be in dropping it in a remote area, it might be hitting a Ukrainian facility. But in some ways, I think the off-ramp metaphor is the wrong one. Uh, there isn't a good off-ramp, but Putin is going to be making his calculations, you know, is he better off using a tactical nuke or better off not using it? Right. And we can make sure that he understands that if he uses it, he gains little uh, military advantage, and you know, every one of his ships in the Black Sea is gone. Uh, every bit of Russian presence, every uh, in, in Ukraine is gone, uh, and uh, that he will be ostracized all around the world. The economy will be devastated. So we can affect his calculations, and I hope we will. Uh, Peter, Senators Durbin and Chuck Schumer have called for something called NOPEC, uh, which is a, an act that would. Um, would treat OPEC like the cartel it is and allow uh, allow uh, lawsuits against it. Uh, Durbin says this, from unanswered questions about 9-11, the brutal murder of Jamal, journalist Jamal Khashoggi and the exporting of extremism to dubious jailing of peaceful dissidents and conspiring with Vladimir Putin to punish the U.S. with higher oil prices, the Saudi royal family has never been a trustworthy ally of our nation. It's time for our foreign policy to imagine a world without this alliance with these royal backstabbers. Given OPEC Plus's decision to dramatically reduce oil production. It is time for the Senate to pass this important legislation in the lame duck session. What do you, what do you, it's interesting. It's, it's strong language. Would it matter? I mean, nobody's been able to dismantle the OPEC cartel since 1960. What would this do and why would it be interesting? Well, I, I think
think it is very important for the U.S. to try to come up with a fundamentally different foreign policy towards Saudi Arabia. Um, they don't, they, they, they're, they're one of the worst human rights abusers in the world. According to Freedom House, their human rights are even worse than Iran and Russia, if you can believe that. And they're clearly under Mohammed bin Salman. They don't essentially see the United States as an ally. The, the problem, though, is, and we need to be honest about this, is that Saudis and also the Emiratis, the UAE, have weaponized the corruption of our own political system. They have dumped both huge amounts of money into lobbying firms, into think tanks, into former politicians. It's not just the Trump family. One of the reasons that America hasn't been able to think of clearly about a different kind of policy towards both of these brutal autocratic regimes is because they have spent so much inside, so much money inside of Washington, and both parties have been tainted by it. Uh, Nick, I want to just uh, read you something Eugene Robinson, our good friend, wrote in the Washington Post. He said, Biden tried, decided to try to get the U.S.-Saudi relationship back on a track consistent with American values and interests, hence the visit and fist bump in July. This oil production cut is the thanks he gets. Biden needs to realize that Saudi Arabia under MDS is more part of the problem than part of the solution, and to adjust U.S. policy accordingly, end quote, which is similar to what Peter was just saying. Uh, Biden did try. He got a lot of criticism, including from me, for making that trip to uh, to Saudi Arabia, which I didn't think was was well it, it, it was a good idea. But he thought so, and he's got good advisors. This is what happens. What what do you, what's your take on it? I think that there was a uh, misperception, and it's true in Washington, and it's true in Riyadh. That somehow it's Saudi Arabia that has the leverage in our bilateral relationship because of their oil. And, you know, obviously they do have some leverage. They can cause some damage. But at the end of the day, Saudi Arabia depends for its existence on our security support. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia's military forces can't beat a ragtag rag militia in Yemen and had to be bailed out. So, you know, people say, oh, they can buy arms from France or from Russia. Uh, yeah, they can. But they can't get the implicit security guarantee yeah. that comes with arms. And I think that... Uh, you know, Gene is calling for kind of a reassertion of of, of of that sense of the leverage that we have, and I think that President Biden would be um, well placed to to try to reestablish that. You know, we, we've talked about the economics and the politics, but you, you brought up a very important point: the security guarantees, uh, implicit and explicit, that Saudi Arabia has. That's not a two-way street. Saudi Arabia's got that uh, from the United States. Guys, what an interesting conversation. I uh, love having you both here. Thank you so much. Peter Beinart and Nicholas Kristoff, we appreciate your time. All right, up next, Herschel Walker, who says he wants to ban all abortions, says he doesn't know the woman who claimed he paid for her abortion in 2009, which has made all the more interesting now that new reporting indicates that she is allegedly also the mother of one of his children. This is just one of the many, many alleged democracies in Herschel Walker's past. So why is the Senate race between Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock statistically tied? We'll ask Senator Gary Peters. He's standing by. He's the chair of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. That's next. Bipolar depression. It made me feel trapped in a fog. This is art inspired by real stories of bipolar depression. I just couldn't find my way out of it. A low of bipolar depression can take you to a dark place. Latuda can make a real difference in your symptoms. Latuda was proven to significantly reduce bipolar depression symptoms, and in clinical studies had no substantial impact on weight. This is where I want to be. Call your doctor about sudden behavior changes or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Report fever, confusion, stiff or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be life-threatening or permanent. These aren't all the serious side effects. Now, I'm back where I belong. Ask your doctor if Latuda is right for you. Pay as little as zero dollars for your first prescription. My name is Tanya. I am 42. Yes, a mother of nine kids. I think I waited this long to get Botox cosmetic because I take, like, no time for myself. My kids are sports kids. We're always running from one activity to another. I'm still Tanya, and I got Botox cosmetic. And this is, like, the first thing I've done for me in a really, really long time. My life is still crazy. It's just as full as it was before. Just with less lines. Botox Cosmetic is FDA approved to temporarily make frown lines crispy and forehead lines look better. The effects of Botox Cosmetic may spread hours to weeks.
case after injection causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness may be a sign of a life-threatening condition. Do not receive Botox Cosmetic if you have a skin infection. Side effects may include allergic reactions, injection site pain, headache, eyebrow, eyelid drooping, eyelid swelling. Tell your doctor about your medical history, muscle and nerve conditions, and medications including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. See for yourself at BotoxCosmetic.com. I haven't heard from him in a while. Constant contact, automatically send a text. You know, I've never had a relationship with a gardener like this. Actually, been in skate park protect. Oh wow. Your shipping manager left to find himself, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed, you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com/hire. Angie's List is now Angie, and it's easier than ever to get your projects done right. With Angie, you can connect with top pros and see ratings and reviews. And when you book and pay through Angie, you're covered by our happiness guarantee. Check out Angie.com today. Angie and done. You plan the perfect thank you with the promotional product experts at 4imprint who attended to every detail. Did you get it right? You certainly did. For the right products printed perfectly, go to 4imprint.com. 4imprint. For certain. When you've got a health concern, they're searching the internet and their science. They're surprise bills, and there's knowing what you're going to pay. There's a lab test on their own schedule from home. There's physician-reviewed results you can understand fairly well. Demand better for your body. Say, what are you doing? Just playing solitaire. Oh, Jay, it's not the 90s anymore. Solitaire Grand Harvest? It has everything you love about the nostalgic solitaire wow. and so much more. Exciting challenges, rewarding harvest feeling, and even build your own farm. Join us and explore a new world of solitaire. Download Solitaire Grand Harvest for free now. Have you heard? Affordable health care is better than ever. And right now there are more carriers and plans to choose from. The government's Affordable Care Act is available for individual and family health coverage plans with little to no cost to you. 70% of callers qualify for a zero-cost health care coverage. See if you are one of them. This is not Medicaid or Medicare. This is the marketplace with the largest selection of health care plans from the Affordable Care Act. Call 800-856-4430. The January 6th hearings resume. Andrea Mitchell, Katie Turner, and Hallie Jackson kick off coverage at 12 p.m. Then it won the full hearing, followed by in-depth analysis of the latest revelations. Thursday, beginning at 12 p.m. on MSNBC. This was middle class, model city America. This doesn't happen in Teaneck. There was no reason for that cop to shoot him in his back. And he was going to shoot me. That was my dad. you might call a weird week in Georgia's Senate race. On Monday, the Daily Beast reported that in 2009, Herschel Walker, currently running on a platform of opposing all abortion with no exceptions, paid for a woman he was involved with to have an abortion. The woman provided the Daily Beast with a receipt from the abortion clinic and pictures of a get well card that Walker sent to her, along with a check for $700. The card reads, rest, relax, recover. It also included a personal note from Walker that says, Pray you're feeling better. I should note that NBC News has not been able to verify the Daily Beast reporting, which was followed by swift denials from Herschel Walker. I never asked anyone to get an abortion. I never paid for an abortion, and it's a lie, and I'm going to continue to fight. Now, on Wednesday, Walker claimed that he has no idea who this woman could possibly be. It's sort of like everyone is anonymous or everyone is leaking, and... They want you to confess to something you have no clue about. Now, it's that comment right there that appears to have been a bridge too far for the woman in question. According to a follow-up story the Daily Beast posted last night, the woman is also the mother of one of Walker's children and was in a relationship with him for years, even after the abortion. She reportedly called Walker's defense ridiculous and said, quote, I'm stunned, but I guess it also doesn't shock me that maybe there are just so many of us that he truly doesn't remember, end quote. Now, it's at this point that Walker's denials get harder and harder to believe. Here's what he told conservative radio host Hugh Hewitt when asked about this latest report this morning. I know this is untrue. I know it's untrue. And they keep telling me things like that, and it 
totally, totally untrue. And I, I'm not sure why uh, that will be told. I know nothing about any woman having an abortion. And, and uh, so they, they can keep coming at me like that. It's, and they're doing it because uh, they want to distract people. I know that. Because, you know, I've already been forgiven. And if I've been forgiven, why in the world would I not be forgiven of something I had like that? And I'm not sure. saying they're forgiven. He didn't follow that. That's okay. At a campaign event in Georgia today, Walker was given yet another chance to explain the situation. I'm going to give you a wild guess as to how that went. You said that if this did happen, there's nothing to be ashamed of. How do you Wait, I never said, let me you said say, this morning on, on YouTube. No, what I said, I was talking about something totally different than when it did, did happen. I said, when I was with my ex wife in my past, nothing to do with what this woman said. I said, this, this here. The abortion thing is false. It's a lie. And that's what I said. I said, either man have my ex wife or what Christian was talking about, I don't know. But as I said, if anything happened, there's nothing to be ashamed of my ex wife and I have been the best of friends with her husband and my wife. So that's the thing I said. And I said nothing about if it did happen because I said that's a lie. So, to clarify. Walker says he didn't pay for a woman he was in a relationship with to have an abortion, but if he did, it would be nothing to be ashamed of or something like that. Now, that doesn't sit right with Walker's ex. She told the Daily Beast, quote, He seemed pretty pro-choice to me. He was pro-choice, obviously. He picks and chooses where it's convenient for him to use that religious crutch, end quote. Now, let's just take a step back for a second. Midterms are 33 days away, and somehow this is the story that might sink Walker's campaign? Keep in mind, we're talking about the guy who said this back in July when talking about the climate crisis. Well, if you don't control the air, I was good air beside a photo of the China, bad air. <laughs> so when China getting out good air, their bad air got to move. <laughs> information. What about getting a department that can look at young men that's looking at uh, women that's looking at uh, just social media? What about doing that, looking into things like that, and we can stop that that way? But yet they want to just continue to talk about taking away your constitutional rights. Now, for some reason, these incoherent responses to questions about serious issues that we face in America are not disqualifying, according to many Republican voters. Neither is the hypocrisy of Walker's public stance on abortion versus what he allegedly does in private, or lying about his family, his education, his post-football employment, which he's done. Apparently, none of it matters. This is the sad reality of where we are right now, in Georgia and in many parts of the country. With all of Walker's baggage, polling shows that he and Senator Raphael Warnock are in a statistical tie. That's because of the margin of error. Why is that? Joining us now is the Democratic Senator Gary Peters of Michigan. He's the chair of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. Senator Peters, good to see you again. It's been a while. I appreciate you joining us tonight. Herschel Walker is but one example of, I, I think I can make up four, five, six uh, Republican senatorial candidates uh, across the country who say some wacky stuff. Uh, I, what's going on and why are, why are these candidates still competitive? You've got, you've got one in Arizona. You've got one in Pennsylvania, you've got one in uh, Wisconsin, you've got one in Georgia, there, there are a few other examples as well. Well, uh, you're right about that, Ellie. There, there's no question uh, if you look at candidate quality between Democratic incumbents uh, and uh, our candidates uh, in states versus the Republicans, there's a clear contrast. It is very clear. Uh, you played some of the, the comments uh, that Herschel Walker made. Uh, it's very important for the voters uh, in Georgia to take a look at those comments, to compare and contrast uh, with Raphael Warnock. And I think the, the difference will be very clear as voters will look at that. But we also knew that these are tough states. Uh, we are competing in battleground states that we knew would tighten as the election uh, got closer uh, to, uh, uh, to fruition. Uh, we also know that Republicans right now are dumping in unprecedented amounts of money outspending our candidates in these races, and they they don't let truth get in the way of their ads as they attack our, our candidates with negative, nasty ads. But they're pouring money into these races, and they're tightening. That's why it's incumbent for us to 
make sure Democrats uh, across the country understand what's at stake in this election, understand what is happening in each of these states, and support our Democratic candidates and support the, the DSCC. We have uh, defendthesenate.org, which is our website that will, uh, is critical for us to have the resources to fight back against the desperation tactics we're seeing from Republicans in these uh, states. They're tough. We have better candidates. We have better incumbents. It's clear. Uh, but we uh, have to have the resources to make sure that we can run uh, strong right across the finish line in the weeks ahead. I just want to go back to this uh, fundraiser that, that President Biden was at this, at this evening. I believe you were there as well. Uh, he made some very, very strong comments about Russia and Vladimir Putin and the threat of nuclear uh, weaponry. In fact, he said, we have not faced the prospect of nuclear Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban, Cuban Missile Crisis. I didn't realize how much serious damage the previous administration did to our foreign policy. You happen to be the chair of the Homeland Security Committee. Control of the Senate in this particular instance is is directly tied to our national security, given the saber rattling that that, uh, that that Vladimir Putin is up to right now. Well, there's no question about that. It's a very serious uh, situation. Uh, we have to continue to stay strong, supporting the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian military uh, against. Uh, Mr. Putin. It's clear that he feels that he's uh, lost the uh, momentum, that he's being pushed into a corner, and he's making some, some very dangerous uh, comments. Uh, he needs to be called out. Uh, clearly, President Biden uh, uh, understands uh, the, the gravity of the situation and is working very hard to, to keep our allies uh, all engaged in this as well. He's uh, certainly the right person to be the president at this very pivotal time uh, in our history. And there's no question the previous administration did an incredible amount of damage uh, in terms of foreign relations uh, with our allies. Thankfully, President Biden has been able to rebuild that, bring a coalition together to stand up.